Director Bung. introduce you that we have the we have a translator tonight so because my Korean is not as good as it used to be Hello. so I did find the film about you know it being about the have and have-nots and about uh, the good and maybe the bad of capitalism and the um, and also the theme of coexistence um, Talk about that. It's a small subject. Since the title is Parasite, I think we naturally have to ask ourselves then who is the parasite? In particular, uh, in Korea, the word parasite carries very negative connotations. Um, it carries a lot of disdain and humiliation. So as a title, it was pretty risky um, to call this parasite. Uh, but at the same time, as you mentioned, it, this film is also about coexistence. And of course, it would be great if we could all coexist rather than be parasites. But I think this story really shows uh, what happens when the basic uh, respect we should have for another one another person, the moments when those are destroyed and we end up becoming parasites, uh, well, we don't have any choice but to become parasites. Um, this, this film shows the sad uh, but scary reality that could happen from that. But speaking about the titles of both The Host and Parasite, yeah. um, some would say they're misleading and yeah, is that on purpose? Yeah, many people think this is some kind of sci-fi action movie or <laughs> body, body snatchers from the inside kind of. But I don't think it's bad. 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 Uh, but I didn't dislike the fact that people mistook uh, this film. It's always nice to have people interest, uh, be interested in your film, even if that means uh, having other expectations. But you must do some of that on purpose, just to have a little fun, maybe. Um, in Korea, the host is actually called the monster, but obviously since the English title is the host, Parasite does feel like a sequel, uh, but I didn't really intend that. Did you, <laughs> did you have an inspiration, was something inspirational, inspirational to make this story that, that, that made you start thinking about it? Um, so, like the protagonist of this film, when I was in college, I worked as a tutor. So 
So at the time, um, I actually tutored for a very rich family. I taught a middle school boy, and one day he took me to the second floor of, this, of his house and showed me their private sauna. Um, and I was very surprised to see that uh, there were saunas at homes, and it felt very, it also felt very strange because it felt like I was spying on the private lives of, a, of complete strangers, and I really recall those memories when I was writing the script. <laughs> 다른 가족의 남의 집에 들어가서 하는 일이 튜터링만 있는 건 아니잖아요. 뭐 예를 들어 매니가 있을 수도 있는 거고 뭐 하우스키퍼, 뭐 운전사 많단 말이에요. 뭐 나의 온 가족이 이렇게 다 차례로 들어가면 어떻게 될까라는 그런 엉뚱한 생각을 처음에 다 하게 됩니다. But of course, there are other jobs that uh, let you enter other people's houses. Um, you can be a nanny or a housekeeper. So I thought, of what would happen if an entire family enters another another home one by one? <laughs> well, well, speaking of the homes, was the home real? Tell me about the sets or how that was done. It's all set. But the rich house is built on the ground and. Even the poor house and poor neighborhood, the whole town is set. Wow. We built the set in the middle of, in the swimming pool, the water tank. And we shoot every sequence there. And the, the, the last two days, we put the dirty water there. And then, Hopefully just colored water. Exactly. It's very clean water. It's very, it's very good for our actors. <laughs> Uh, we added in facial mud masks into the water to give it that color. So it looks very dirty, but it's actually looks very dirty. <laughs> the best scene is she's sitting on the toilet and all the dark stuff's coming out. It was very visual. Visual 하면서 또 웃기기도 하고 슬프기도 한 그런 복합적인 장면이죠. 그것도 이제 그 뿜어 나오는 압력을 미리 테스트도 많이 하고 준비를 많이 했어요. So visually, it's a very funny scene, but it's also very sad as well. It carries a lot of um, complex emotions, and we really prepared a lot for that sequence. We tested the um, the pressure of the water as it spews out from from the toilet. Sounds terrific. So the cinematographer that you used uh, on this film was also um, the cinematographer on Snowpiercer. Yeah, he did Snowpiercer and Mother, and the last year, the Yi Chang Dong's Burning, he was also his Israeli master, mm. master cinematographer. I, I, after, after I saw Snowpiercer, and I hope some of you, and I'm sure all of you, didn't see it in a theater. <laughs> Most of you saw it probably in via a different way, unfortunately, um, because so the nice. sound on that film <laughs> was the way. It's, it's on Netflix. <laughs> oh. Well, the app was about sound if you were in the door. That's okay. Um, but the it, it was so beautiful, beautifully shot. And then I saw him shoot this film. And when they're they're coming back from the house and going to the to the water tank. Um, and walking down those stairs. I mean, it's just a brilliant, brilliant lighting, everything. He's, 그, he's really 네, something. 그 코멘트를 해주셔서 되게 좀 고마운데, 그, 그씬 있잖아요. 그러니까 부잣집에서 탈출해서 가난한 집으로 이제 계속 내려오는 그, 그 비시퀀스에 전화 촬영 감독이 정말 욕심을 많이 냈었죠. 네. So thank you for that comment, in particular about that rain sequence, um, where the the family escapes the po uh, the rich house and they descend into the poor neighborhood. That entire rain sequence, it was it was something that the DP and I were really ambitious about. 감독들이 원래 다 그런 좀 욕망이 있어요. 그러니까 뭐 브로자와 아키라의 어떤 세븐 사무라이를 근거하는 비신을 찍고 싶은 그런 욕심들이 있죠. I think every film director has the desire to pull off a, an amazing rain sequence that is maybe uh, better than Kurosawa Kira's Seven Samurai. Yeah. <laughs> 꼭 그걸 뭐 멋있고 싶어서 그렇게 찍었던 건 아니고 주제랑도 많이 직접적인 연관이 있었죠. 이렇게 물이 위에서 아래로만 내려가잖아요. 그래서 그 어떻게 보면 되게 슬픈 그 흐름을 보여주는 거예요. 부자로부터 가난한 쪽으로 내려가는 거죠. 물이. 그 주인공의 다리 사이로 흘러가는 그 물이 결국 자기 집을 향해서 가고 있는 거잖아요. 가 보면 집이 잠겨 있고. But it's not uh, just to achieve a visually um, aesthetic, a stunning visual aesthetics. It's really closely tied to the overall theme of this film, as water only flows uh, from top to bottom, um, and it's a it's a 
it's a sad natural flow where water only flows from the rich neighborhoods to the poor ones. Um, the water that flows through the protagonist's legs as he escapes the rich house eventually uh, flows into his house and submerges his entire, uh, his entire home. Everything was layered, right? Even when they're underneath the coffee table, it's all layered, right? So um, I, I think it's, first of all, I, I wanna thank the director for coming. We have sold out every show that he's appearing at. And, and, for, and for those who don't know the deal, because there's a deal, there's a, the deal is we don't charge you more for Q and A's but you have to tell three people that you love the film, if you did love the film, and I know you did, and to, so that they'll come back and see, see the movie. Um, but I do want to, um, since you guys all made it here um, through the lovely traffic, um, I want to give you guys a, a chance to ask the director some questions, so, um, and I'll let you choose who you would like. <laughs> I'm working on two projects right now, one in Korean and one in English. It's a small size movie, like Parasite or Mother. So, so I found a lot of struggles of working on big budget films. It was a hectic process. <laughs> um, so, uh, working on Okja was a great experience, uh, but for me, it was a big budget film. Uh, of course, in the US, it would be considered a mid sized budget. Um, one of our crew members from Okja is here. Um, but uh, for Parasite, it really felt like I was using a magnifying glass against the sunlight to burn a tiny dot onto paper. And there was, um, it, I felt a lot of excitement that came from that sort of focused approach. And that's something that I would like to continue on in the future. Next. Yeah, I just had a question because I see a lot of, um, a lot of films Remind me of the film, like a lot of work from Gamal and Chabral, and I'm curious if you had directors watch any of your films or you watch them. Uh, that, Claude in particular, you mentioned Claude Chabrol. He's a, he's a French master of crime, crime films, and I was very much inspired by him uh, for Parasite. He released this film called The Beast Must Die in around 69, uh, and that film is also about this middle-aged man who creeps into a middle-aged, fa uh, middle-class uh, family for revenge. But so maybe the biggest inspiration was the Korean classic called The Housemaid, in 1960, the Kim Gi-young. You can find out the, the movie by, released by Criterion DVD, so please go find out it in Amoeba. <laughs> <laughs> All right, somebody back in the expensive seats? <laughs> there you go. Uh, yep, yep, you. is a metaphor and then he gets beat over the head with it. And I'm wondering <laughs> is the is the stone is he the audience and are you comforting us that the metaphor won't kill us but it will make us nuts. <laughs> Uh, 
그, 그 해석이 되게 흥미롭고 감사하고요 코멘트가 근데 어, 재밌는 점은 그 <웃음> 산수경석이 처음 나왔을 때 주인공이 지가 지입으로 오가 되게 상징적이다 이러잖아요 보통 그런 거는 관객들이 보면서 야 상징일까? 이래야 되는 건데 먼저 배우가 자기 입으로 메타포리칼하다고 선언을 해버리다 말이죠. Uh, that's a really interesting interpretation, and thank you for it. Um, the really uh, funny part about that stone is when that stone first appears in, in the film, the protagonist announces himself that this stone is very metaphorical. Usually, that's something that the audience asks themselves, but this time it's the actor just saying it out loud in the film. Because 사실 약간 어이없는 거죠. 이게 배우가 직접 그런 말을 해버리고, 그러니까 오히려 그별이 상징으로. 보지 않았으면 하는 마음도 있었던 것 같아요 제가 배우가 먼저 이렇게 말해서 기입을 빼버리는 거라고 해야 될까? 이렇게 통해야 되지 근데 어쨌든 그 그러다가 그 돌이 결국 자기의 머리를 이렇게 막 내려 찍잖아요 저기 하나 더 흉기자고 그 상징적 어떤 해서 했던 머리 치는 거니까요 strange for her to say that himself I add that in so that as a as a metaphor or tation and it really acts as a uh, it's kind of versus the end. Um, I just current versus are you? I'm not sure. 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 Every uh, house, uh, who I'm old to see. After that, <laughs> <laughs>